Hello, I hope you are doing well. In this video, we will learn to train Google Minute, a popular convolutional neural network to classify fruits. Let's get started. Let's create a folder to keep our work organized and name it Fruit Classification using Google Minute. The first thing we need to do is to create a dataset of fruits. Create a folder named Dataset. Inside of this folder, create a folder for mango, one for orange, one for apple, and one for jackfruit. Now launch your web browser and search for JPG image of mango. I'm using JPG image. It doesn't mean that it has to be JPG image. You can use other image formats. There is no problem with that. Now go to the image. Click on any of these images. Then save it in the mango folder. Collect 10 to 15 more images in this way. Then search for JPG images of orange. In the same way, collect 10 to 15 images of orange. Now do the same for apple and jackfruit. Alright, our dataset is ready. This is an example dataset. That is why we are working with 10 to 15 images in each category. But if you want to conduct a research to publish a paper, you need a lot of images in your dataset. You can download this example dataset from the link in the description of this video. Now launch your MATLAB. Then click on this Browse for Folder icon to locate and load our folder in the current folder directory. We can see our dataset folder here. If you do not have Google Net installed in your MATLAB, install it before doing anything else. Click on this Add-ons drop-down icon. Then click on Get Add-ons. And the Add-on Explorer will open. Search for Google Net. Then click on Deep Learning Toolbox model for Google Net network. Click on Install, then choose Install to install Google Net. Click on I accept. Once the installation is completed, click on Close. Close this Add-ons Explorer window. Now click on this new script icon to create a new script and save it as training. First of all, we need to load the dataset in MATLAB's workspace. Take a variable named dataset. Then use image data store function to load the dataset. The first argument of this function is the path to the dataset we want to load. Our dataset is in the working directory, so simply type the name of the dataset. Our dataset is organized in subfolders. That is why we have to use include subfolders and the value of this argument is true. It means we are including the subfolders. We need to label the data category. Actually, these folder names are the labels of the data category. That is why the label source is folder names. Now we have the dataset in this dataset object. Next thing to do is to split the dataset into training and validation dataset. Use a split each label function to do it. It will split the dataset into 70 ratio 30. That means 70% of the data will be used for training and 30% of the data will be used for validation. Then load the Google Net and store it in the Net variable. We are going to train the Google Net, so we need to know the architecture of this network. We can analyze the architecture of this network using Analyze Network function. And the argument of this function is the Net. Now run this code to analyze the Google Net's architecture. We can see there are 144 layers here. I want you to observe the first layer. This is the input layer and the input type are images. 
The size of the input images should be 224 by 224 pixels, 3 channel images. But the images we have are different in sizes. We have to resize them according to the size of the input layer of the network. Otherwise, it will not work. Let's see how to get the input layer size and resize the training and validation images. Go to the command window and type in net. We can see the structure of the Google net here. In order to access the layers, type net dot layers. It shows all of the layers, but we only need the input layer. So type net dot layers and use one here to get the input layer only. We actually want to get the input size of the input layer. So type net dot layers one dot input size. Let's copy it from here and paste it here. We can see the input size is 224 by 224 pixel image having three channels. All of our images are three channel images. So we do not need to bother about the channels. We only need the first two values. So type one colon two here to get the first two values. So using this code, we can get the input size of the input layer of the Google Net. Let's copy it and store it in a variable named input layer size. Now take a variable named resized training image and then use augmented image data store function to resize the training data set to input layer size and do the same thing for the validation data set. Now we have the resized image. We are actually modifying the Google Net to retrain to classify fruits. Now the question is, which layers we have to modify? Let's have a look at the network architecture for once again. Here, layer 142 is the feature learner layer. We want the network to learn features of our dataset. So we have to modify this layer. Google Net is designed to classify 1000 different types of objects and it is done at the 144th layer. We have only four classes in our dataset. So we have to modify this layer too. Take a variable named feature learner and store the 142nd layer in it. Take another variable named output classifier and store the 144th layer in it. Now we need to find out the number of classes we have in our training dataset. First of all, get the labels of the training dataset. Then use categories function to categorize them. Finally, use numL function to find the number of categories. And this is the number of classes we have in our dataset. It is time to modify the feature learner layer. Take a new variable named new feature learner and use fully connected layer function to modify the feature learner layer. The first argument of this function is the number of classes we have in our dataset. Let's use the three dots to go to a new line. Second argument is the name and the value is what we like to call the new layer. Let's name it fruit feature learner. Now go to a new line using three dots. Next argument is weight learner rate factor. 
Let's set it to 10. The last argument we need is bias learn rate factor and the value is 10. The new feature learner layer has been defined. Now let's modify the classification layer. Take a variable named new classifier layer. We use classification layer function to modify the last layer. Let's give it a name, fruit classifier. No other argument is necessary here. In order to modify the network architecture, we need the entire layer graph. Take a variable named layer graph and then use the layer graph function to get the layer graph of the Google Net. Now we have to modify the network architecture. Take a variable named new layer graph, then use replace layer function to modify the layer graph. The old feature learner layer will be replaced with this new feature learner. Similarly, the existing output classifier will be replaced by new classifier layer. Let's analyze our new network architecture. This is the modified network. We've got a new feature learner layer named fruit feature learner. And there is a new classifier layer named Fruit Classifier. Close the network analyzer and get back to the script. It is time to train the network. To train the network, we are going to use mini batch of size 5. Calculate the validation frequency by taking the floor value of the number of files we have in the resize training image divided by the size of the mini batch. To train the network, we have to specify several training options. Let's take a variable named training options and use the training options function to specify the options. The first argument is the learning rule. For this example, we are using SGD which stands for Stochastic Gradient Descent Momentum. Then mini batch size which value we have already defined. Maximum epoch is 6. Initial learning rate is 3 into 10 to the power minus 4. We want to shuffle the training data in every epoch. The validation data are stored in the resized validation image variable. The validation frequency is this value. We do not need the verbose, so set it false. And we want to observe the training progress, so plot training progress. Now we have the training options ready, so we can start the training process. Take a variable named net and use train network function to train the network. The first argument of this function is the training data. In our example, it is resize training image. Second argument is the network architecture, which is new layer graph. And the last argument is the training options. Everything is ready. Click on Run to train the network. The training has started. We can see the validation accuracy is increasing while the validation loss is decreasing. That means the network is learning properly. The training is completed. The validation accuracy of the network is 94.12%. It is time to test the network. We are going to create a function named test network to test the network. At the beginning, define the function. 
The name of the function is test network and it takes the net and the image as input. Then it loads the image. Then it resizes the image to 224 by 224 pixels. To classify images, we use classify function. This function takes the network and the image as argument and return the label of the classified image and the probability of it. Then use figure, aim show function to show the image. Then inside of the title function, use char function to show the label. Then use show maximum probability. Use num to string function to convert the number into string. And we want to show it using maximum six digits. This is the end of the function. Now launch your web browser and search for image of a mango. Collect an image which is not in our training dataset. Then save it in the working directory. Now call the test network function with network and the image. It shows 0 0.999987. It means 99% accuracy. Let's multiply 100 with it and call the function again with the same arguments. Now it shows 99.99% accuracy. Let's do the same for jackfruit. We've got 99% accuracy again. Let's try the image of an apple. We've got 80% accuracy. Let's see how does our network do for orange. We've got 99% accuracy for once again. This is how we can train a convolutional neural network to classify fruits. If you think my videos are helpful, please hit the like button, subscribe my channel, and I'll be very happy if you share this video. Thank you for watching.